Howdy, folks. This is Maddie Mark. Yay! Your <laughs> real fake outside artist coming to you from the bunker system located underneath the art villa, found somewhere in the jungles of the Midwest. That's right. And today I'm coming to you with a real treat. Oh man! I just I just can't believe what I've got to share. Uh, it's probably going to have to be a three-part video because yesterday is my day that I go to uh, lunch with all the old timers, and then I hit the Goodwill store. And you know, you know, I'm, it's my errand day, right? So I go out, and I'm at the Goodwill store, and they've got this like two stacks of, you know, about as wide as the screen of records hidden in a corner, and it's kind of a rundown place. But I guess all Goodwill stores are kind of, kind of funky. I should know I've been in enough of them, um, but in this case, it's just like really rundown. <laughs> Um, which is probably a wonderful place to find treasures, which it is. It turned out to be so. But the funny thing is, is you know, I go once a week, and I started going again. I, I was on a long hiatus, and I started going again. So I've been doing it for about two months. And this LP that I picked up yesterday, I passed over for a month. Each week I'd look at it. I wouldn't even consider it, frankly, because it's religious-oriented and... Um, uh, Christmas oriented and it, it, it usually you know you can get something really good or it's just standard fare when it comes to uh, religious LPs um, so far you know I, I played Kyla Guardian Angel that was pretty cool um, but this one it, 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 and the other thing is it had a full color cover so it's like you know I just look at it and think well somebody spent too much money so it's got to be you know good <laughs> I mean, I've bought albums that actually have a great, you know, by tr traditional standards, good music on it, or just like run-of-the-mill stuff. Nothing special, nothing unique. I, I keep, I need to use the word unique. So, but I turned it over and I kind of looked at it again. And the photo, the other thing that attracts me are photographs that are sort of shot in people's living room, living room, you know, or there are odd looking characters, you know, on it. And um, the photograph's not really professional, but. This is a studio photograph in the back. It's a stock uh, photo on the cover of a house with a Christmas tree in the window. Uh, and six, it, it was recorded, recorded, produced in 69. Um, so they had to pay money for this uh, stock photo, full color cover, printed album cover, a studio shot in the back of the, the group. And this cost production of, of graphics and artwork and printed materials in the, in, the, in the late 60s up and through probably the 90s before the computers became really uh, relevant to everyone uh, on a face of, well, in America and face of the planet, generally speaking, or at least the printing industry, let me just go that far. Um, it was, it cost money and you had to hire people and pay people and, and it, you know, it was, a, it was a real thing. So it's like, well, somebody had too much money, so it has to be like standard. So I, that's why I didn't didn't go for it. Uh, however, I thought, eh, well, you know, I just part with the 50 cents. It's uh, very difficult to do that. So I did. And what I picked up was this album by the Singing Brewers. Well, the other thing that attracted me, Cincinnati has had a long history of recording um, record companies. And, and I'm not a historian when it comes to this stuff. Uh, King Records was in Cincinnati. That's, the, that's what I was trying to think of. And they're well known, but there there are a bunch of just like people that recorded stuff in their houses. I don't know. I mean, and this was recorded in Cincinnati, so it, you know I, I I have a tendency to, to pick up stuff that's recorded locally just because it's local and it interests me. Um, and this was recorded at Artist Recording and and Record Pressing Inc. Um, the Singing Brewers, and I'll put I'll put their, their photograph up on the screen. There you go. You can see it's a studio shot, and. Uh, and I thought, well, this just isn't going to be, you know, worth listening to. So, the first on the first side one, there's a medley of Christmas tunes, and it's not very good, but it's not unique. You know, it's just like, okay, there you go. Um, it, well, let me preface this by saying, the more I think about this album, the more odd it just becomes, and the more I treasure it. <laughs> uh, so even even the the metal is kind of weird because they don't blend songs together 
the, per the mama, I guess, as she calls herself, um, Pearl D. Brewer, otherwise known, a.k.a. Mama, um, weaves the songs together by speaking between each one. So it's kind of a bizarre medley, so to speak. Now, you don't even call it that, but that's basically what it is. Um, but track seven is Oh Holy Night, and I'll get to that. Um, side two, and one of the reasons why I finally uh, broke down and, and parted with my 50 cents was the, the, uh, the Christmas songs. Uh, all of them are Christmas songs except for a, a one. And um, <clears throat> the, the first track on side two, which I'm going to play in this video, is Sleigh Ride. And it's an instrumental. It's the only instrumental on the, uh, on the LP. And it's just odd enough that I enjoy it. I, I enjoy listening to it. It's, it's just... <laughs> Was I right? I think I was right. Awesome. An awesome treasure. <laughs>